This is Kevin Barnett's build stuff. This is what it looks like. It's a mess, frankly. Not your typical BS. I've got plans. Let's go through it right now. Uh, it chipped off the inside of the beat. I'm Kevin Barnett. Let's BS. Welcome inside, everybody. I'm Kevin Barnett. I am the maker in charge, and as you can see today, I'm not alone. Welcome the uh, official DJ of the Los Angeles Lakers and my good friend, Jeremy Roche. DJ Roche is what you can refer to him as. Thank you for having me. And you are, you are quarantine ready, my friend. I am. My beard actually serves as a facial mask as well. <laughs> so we have a little bit of company here for Build Stuff Episode 3. Appreciate you being here. Looking forward to a lot of fun. Of course, you're going to meet several makers during this one. We'll have an extended interview as we usually do. It's with Bernie Solo. Uh, works by Solo, really cool guy up in Michigan who is a professional artist by training, does a lot of machining work now, does a lot of metal work. We're also going to teach you how to do something with our fast project of the day. And our fast project today is we are doing image transfer to wood. And that's a laser print like this. We're going to take that and put it on a piece of wood and we're going to make it permanent. And we'll make you some cool stuff so you can take this technique and you can use it to make all kind of cool stuff for your friends. Jeremy, maybe we can make you something for your DJ booth if there's ever live events again. If I'm ever allowed to DJ for people again. Can't wait. So let's get into it right away now that we know what's going on. Our fast project here. Listen, I know you can go to the mall kiosk. I know you can get somebody to print an image on, on wood for you. I know he'll do it for like $49.99 for something this big. We're going to do it for a little bit cheaper than that. So first. Let's get your materials together and what you're going to need. First up, let's take a look at it if we get our staff here. We still have to turn around because uh, I haven't mounted the monitor over there yet, but I'm a work in progress. Laser printed image. Go ahead and print it out on your laser printer. There is a way to do it with inkjet. We'll talk about that throughout. You're going to need a piece of wood cut to the right size. You'll need a matte gel or it's actually Mod Podge. I misspelled it there. That's on me. <laughs> and you'll need some polyurethane to cover it. There's no spell check on that? The, well, the spell check would be with me. Yeah, yeah, I, I wrote that. So, uh, you need an image. I have a little guy here. Jeremy, you know who this is? I don't know, but he's like an 8-bit character. He is 8-bit. That's excellent, excellent identification. This is Mega Man, one of the all-time great NES games in the world. So, Mega Man is our character right now we're going to work with. What you want to do is get your piece of wood. I already went ahead and dimensioned. This is just half inch, which is great because it, it'll stand okay as long as you don't touch it. Some of these other ones, like this butterfly, which we're going to work with later, uh, this guy is a little better. It's on one inch thick birch. I like I like this Baltic birch because it just has a cool look to it. You don't have to have these burn lines on the side. You can go ahead and sand those off. But this stands quite well. So let's take a look at our steps here, our first steps. Select your image. We have Mega Man here. You're going to print and cut out. So we'll cut this guy down just a little bit and dimension your wood for transfer. We have already done that here inside the studio. What, Jeremy, you and I had a podcast for years together. Uh, we had the home court. What? I don't know what to call this space. I'm the maker in charge, but I don't really have a good name for the place. Well, first of all, I like the term maker. There's yeah. so many, it makes me think of uh, the Goldbergs, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'll have to come up with some ideas for you. I mean, it still feels like the home court because it's at your home. Yeah. No. Well, you're not a maker. I'm definitely not a maker. In terms of stuff, but you make music, so you're making some. It's just in a different in a different genre. Tell me about that process. I just need a computer. I don't need lasers and measuring sticks and protective gear. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, use what little talent I have and uh, create notes on a computer and then say export, and then all of a sudden you have it on iTunes. Can you sing? So simple. I can sing, yes. You can? Not well. Oh, okay. But that well, I can sing too, but yeah, not well. That wasn't the, the question. Can be there. more specific. Have, have we covered our tools yet, gentlemen? Can we can we show tools? Do we have that list? I'm ready to measure stuff. We may or may not have the, the tool list. Yeah, you, I'm ready to measure. You're stuff. ready to measure anything. anything? Yeah, anything you need measured. Let me let me put all the tools out here for you. So this is what you're going to need. You're going to need some foam brushes. You're going to need a scraper of some kind. Now, in this case, I have something that's left over from my days in motocross. This is a decal works for putting on vinyl decals onto plastic. You're also going to need, this is the, uh, in this case, matte gel, not Mod Podge, but matte gel. Talked about that. Uh, you'll need a jigsaw, which we'll use in a minute. It's down there. Uh, maybe we'll let you use that, Jeremy. That'll be fun. Good idea. And then uh, we will have sandpaper as well. If you're in a shop, you always got to have sandpaper, but you can have it in the house too. So, first steps. 
Oh, you have a tools list? Sweet. Yeah, there they are. And why? Yeah. You didn't hear me say it. There it is. And why a foam brush? Why a foam brush? It, it just gives a nice even coat. Okay. I, I don't with this stuff. This is a gel in particular, so you can see how thick that is. There's not a ton left in this one, but you can see how thick that is. It's not like I think I use that for my hair or something. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. want to put that in, that'll that'll, nice. that'll sit up real nice. Yeah, I can get the mohawk on. Yeah, you will. That and maybe some eggs, right? <laughs> uh, because if it's something thinner, it can get in with the bristles. This one, I really like the brush. And, and do yourself a favor, get the brush. It's a little bit better because you can rinse it. It's all water based, so you can rinse it. And I, I, this is a, a disposable one that has a little better than the big holes, the giant cellular. I would go a little bit tighter holes, better, smoother feel it goes on. Better. Using all kinds of terminology, I have no idea what he's talking about. I just shake my head yes. And yeah, it makes perfect sense to me. Okay, good. If it's making sense to you, yeah. it probably makes sense to somebody at home. I mean, you made a list, so I just have to look Here. at the list. So why, not, why don't I have you do it? So I've already done all this, so go ahead and just, you need a, a nice thin coat on there. Did I do that right? Yeah, you just dip it in, just smash it in, whatever. Bring it out and then give me a nice thin coat on the wood. You can paint with the end of it. Use the end of it. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So when, and don't press too hard. No, That's the thing. You want you want to leave some of it on there. You don't want to scrape it off. Go ahead and give me some more. Even even that out. You got a big blob. There. Already ruined this project. Sorry, this my kids Sorry everybody. I've already ruined it. <laughs> my kids don't like working with me because they give too many directions. All right. So let's talk about your brushing technique first, Jeremy. Let me give you a little a little brushing lesson here. So get in there, and you want to you want to come across the top like this. You want to use this surface, this angled surface, and kind of even stuff out there, maybe one direction. So you're saying that's not what I was doing? No, you were saying? you were kind of using the, the <laughs> top part of the brush. Yeah, like I was getting peanut butter off my knife. Yeah. So try that. Use use just the bottom part of the brush. I want a nice thin, consistent coat on there. There we go. It's looking good. You're a learner. I like that about you. Yeah. Jeremy. I take directions well, just ask my wife. <laughs> Alright, so we'll take that guy. We'll take our Mega Man. Now sometimes people have a coat here. I've done it both ways. I don't think it makes a big difference to put a coat there and a coat here. On top of the image? Correct. Or you can coat the image and not coat the wood. I like to coat the wood because then it gets in some of the nooks and crannies. Take this guy. We're going to set him down. And I like to kind of give him a little push, like you're doing a decal so you don't get air bubbles. And take this guy and kind of smooth him out. Just you know, one direction. Go towards the corners. There you go. Because you want you want to press in with that a little bit. You want to, you want everything to be on there and glued on there. I did something that. like this with my iPhone with the screen protector. Correct. I leave bubbles every time, and it drives me bananas. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. I didn't put it on, and then I was welding near my phone, and now I have a permanent not functioning <laughs> part of my phone thanks to the welding. All right, so make sure you get your corners down. Well, you look pretty good. You didn't leave any bubbles there. Maybe we'll give you this to go Perfect. with your iPhone next time. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. What you want to do then is you're going to want to let this dry for one to two hours. I've let them dry overnight. I have one here that we'll work with in a minute. That sometimes is too long. Just air dry? or we Yeah, just air dry. Okay. Just air dry. You can speed up with some heat. I've tried that too when I've been in a rush. And the other thing you could use too is polycrylic. We're going to use some polyurethane later. But you can use polycrylic instead of the matte gel. I've seen that Brad Rodriguez, who we're going to talk about here in a minute, has done a comparison between these two, and he liked this one more. And I haven't tried that. Is it a different look, just different texture, or just a preference? It's a it's a better transfer, I think. Got it. It left more of the ink, and we're going to get into some of the tricky stuff that goes along with trying to take away the paper, but not the ink. So what you're wanting to do is you want to take that toner that the laser printer put into the paper, and you want to take that toner and have that stay on the wood, but have the paper come off. And is the paper just normal printer paper that I can get yeah. at the store? Okay. Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. Laser printer, normal paper. You can do black and white images. Doesn't matter. Cool. Doesn't matter at all. So uh, remember, though, print in reverse. Ah. <laughs> that's why, that's why I have two of these. How many times did you make that mistake? Uh, once <laughs> during this. I've done it before. Yeah. Good question. So th this is actually a leftover. You'll see the finished product in a minute. But I printed this and went, oh, yeah. Whoops. That's right. It works if you put it in a mirror. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Only if, if you put yeah. it in a mirror. Yeah. So we've covered step one. That's what that should look like. You're going to leave that set up. An hour or two is plenty, I think. And then you can come back overnight. It's not the end of the world. It just means the paper's really stuck on there. You might have a little harder time getting it off. So with that done, what are we doing here, boys? Are we going to Instagram? 
I think we're going to this week in Instagram stuff that we've been picking out, folks that I know out there in the maker world who I enjoy. And first up, just mention them, fix this, build that with Brad Rodriguez. And he was doing some cool stuff. Guy out of Nashville, Tennessee, my second home. And he was doing some really cool stuff with box joinery. He was talking about using splines in a 45 degree angle. If you don't know what that means, you cut a 45 degree angle, then you cut a quarter inch, or in this case, an eighth inch section into that, and you insert a piece of hardwood into that 45 degree angle to make it a really solid box joint. So you can make a box joint with a 45 degree angle and you can use tape and put it together. But see how he lowers the blade here and he runs it again through that same angle and he creates that space. So you gotta work with your depth and then you can put a spline in it and that spline will not only locate for you like a domino wood or like a biscuit wood, but it will also give you added strength. What is a biscuit wood? Is it edible or? Like a biscuit would. A biscuit is a thing, but it would oh, do okay. something oh, for you. Oh, yes. Okay. It's not an edible. Didn't know if I could get that at Sprouts or <laughs> Bonds. Or no, anything with a green cross. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So yeah, then you box it up and it really helps you maintain those 90 degree angles in your box. And I'm gonna, I haven't done this yet. I'm going to try this. Really excellent results. And Brad Rodriguez, he's a giant here. He's a guy who started out doing other stuff. I, th I think he used to do, he used to work in corporate America. I can't remember exactly his job, but he worked in corporate America and he started this on the side. Now he's a full-time content creator and his partner, John Malecki in their podcast, podcast is called Made for Profit. John Malecki is a guy who played for the Pittsburgh Steelers for a while, was a custom furniture builder, still is. He's moved even further towards the content side. So those two guys talk a lot about business in the shop because I'll tell you pricing, that's hard. When you got into the maker world, did they accept you? Or because you were a former athlete, they're like, you don't know how to make stuff. No, it's actually a very accepting world overall. I like it. It's one thing I enjoy about it is that you can go to these events, you can talk to new people, and it's just about what you make. And I, I believe me, sometimes I have doubts about what I'm making. Is it good enough? Is it cool enough? Is it? It's mostly me. And I got to remember what Jimmy DeResto always says. You are the master of that object. When Apple first came out, their computer had a green screen. And look at them now. So, okay, you gotta, you gotta start somewhere. I could be Steve Jobs. Yeah. No problem. All right, so we'll, we'll get you the a tool of off the bench. We'll take the uh, matte gel off the bench here. Let's uh, let's go on to our next Instagram. And this is someone we're gonna hear from later today. And this is Freeman Furnishings. Katie Freeman. She's out in Iowa. And one of the things I really appreciate about Katie is that she will get out there. She will experiment. She will use all kinds of different things. There's, there's, I think, India ink in this. She did power carving to create the bowl. She's using epoxy to cover it. Uh, her style is all her own when she's doing a lot of stuff with epoxy and with wood, making cutting boards with a combination of the two. She's somebody who I see kind of pushing the boundaries of what she's capable of a lot of the time. Really like that about Katie. And is she making that more as art? No, she sells pieces, yeah. yeah. And she hosts a podcast as well. I think she'll give you the details on that later in our World of Makers segment. We're going to talk to her. Let's go straight to the next one, if we can. Make Magazine. Now, if you're a DIY person, if you have kids who you want to get them into making, you want to get them into some STEM stuff, Make Magazine is for you. They've been a longtime creator of the Maker Fair, which is going to go virtual like so many things right now this year. But they have been a tremendous advocate let's say for people to make things experiment and it's all kinds of different stuff i, mean, I don't know even know what we're looking at here it's like a fuzzy <laughs> r2d2 with their maker with their make magazine robot i'm not quite certain what's going on i don't remember the red robot in star wars but i'll have to go back and look at all the uh, yeah all the episodes but if you take a look at their website go and subscribe to their magazine they send out a magazine each month that has a lot of not only ideas and profiles but it has stuff that you can make. That's what it is. It's about making stuff. So it has projects for you, for the kids, at all different levels. And you may think, oh, I'm beyond it. I don't need that. I already have my little area that I work in. Or I'm an expert, if you consider yourself an expert, at something. Listen, you need the ideas. Yeah. You need the things to add in. And we're going to talk about with this you know, simple image transfer that we're doing here. Some of the ideas and things you can add 
that really make it special. And that's what you're looking for in a thing like Make Magazine. You're looking for ideas to add to what you're doing, not necessarily whole brand new ideas, although they do have that. Well, and especially now when everybody's at home, why not have some projects with your kids? Right, yeah. right. Although your not, kids don't care anymore because they're too old. But that's fine. Yeah, if they're teenagers and got their own lives, good luck with that. <laughs> that's that's where we're at. I think we have one more. A cool. uh, good friend of mine here. This is Cutworks. And this is a guy doing it full time. Eric Hazelich, he's doing it full time. Used to be a mechanic on a race team for on road motorcycles. It's two moto references so far on the show. Yeah, and Jeremy, I didn't even arrange that. I met Eric <laughs> at our local wood shop. I met him at Hudson and West. He encouraged me to buy a track saw from Festool that I own, which I did. I bought that on his recommendation. I just sent him a message later and I said, hey, thanks for the encouragement. It's awesome. But he's making anything from art like this for himself. But he's a job shop. He's a guy, if you need something made in the Los Angeles area, hit up Cutworks on Instagram. He will set you up. The man is a welding savant. Like He's had a lot of practice. Yeah. His welds are to be admired. Well, They're beautiful. The images we're looking at are really cool already. Yeah, this is actually his old shop. He, he just moved to a new shop a little closer to me, which is great. Not so far up in Gardena. So really happy if you can uh, give Eric Hazelich some business over there at Cutworks. That would be terrific. All right, let's get to our guest interview, and then we're going to come back with some more of our project. But our guest interview is a guy I met at WorkbenchCon. His name is Bernie Solo. So yeah, well. and I, I don't know why we had one Star Wars reference. Now we have another. Uh, works by Solo. So let's talk to this lifelong Michigander. Uh, maker of zombie apocalypse weapons, coolest fidget spinner around, restorer of vintage tools, Bernie Solo. Thanks for joining us here on Kevin Barnett's Build Stuff. Yeah, Kevin, thanks a lot for asking me on. Yeah, you and I know each other from WorkbenchCon, but I don't really know what your technical and professional background is. Where do you where do you come from before you're in the maker space? I was always uh, the kid in school doing the artwork for everything. You know, the t you know the teachers. You know, in grade school, they always find out that oh, you you like to draw and you like to do stuff. So then you get you know tagged as the kid that gets to help with the bulletin boards and all that stuff. And um, as I went into school, I got into um, photography, printmaking, and always building stuff because um, what growing up, my dad we always had used cars and we always had uh, stuff that needed to be fixed around the house and stuff like that. So I just come from a long line of people that just you know, just self-sustaining, you know, building stuff. I, I ended up in art school because, I mean, honestly, I applied to regular colleges, a couple of them, like U of M and Eastern Michigan and stuff like that, and I didn't get accepted. I mean, my, my grades weren't good enough. My test scores weren't good enough. And so I was an artist as a kid, photographer, artist, maker, building things, and went to art school for a creative, you know, training, and then got a job right away in an art studio doing commercial Art. So tell me this, how does a guy who is doing artwork, commercial artwork in Detroit, end up with lathes and bridge ports and working with hands-on? Sometimes there's a disconnect there for people that's not there for you. When the computers were powerful enough to start doing photo retouching digitally, mm -hmm. I got into digital photo retouching in automotive for automotive pictures and advertising, which tied me into automotive photography as well. So my photo skills got, you know, like boosted because I was hanging around with all these like automotive photographers and the car companies have always not should say always, but for a long time, they designed the cars in CAD. I, I mean, that's, that's a given, right? Right. Yeah. So they were reaching out and saying, well, who can do photorealistic renderings from this CAD data that we have? And so I got into 3d art. So I was able to have this 3d stuff. So I needed to learn CAD. So when I started learning CAD, I'm thinking, well, not only can I do the work for my clients, but I can build my own stuff in CAD, right? And so I started doing renderings, though. See, because that was my job. I was doing renderings, which is two-dimensional, right? So I started looking into um, 3D output, 3D fabricating. So back in 2010, okay. um, we went to a Maker Fair, Detroit Maker Fair, and I, I saw uh, Bree Pettis, the, the founder of MakerBot. Yep. was there with his stuff. Uh, so it was 2011. We built our first 3D printer. And so I was able to start getting, that was a magical moment. I was able to right. get my art, my 3D CAD models of my own designs. I actually could, you know, print it out. It was like 
wow, you know, I mean, that was like, you know, what, like nine years ago. <clears throat> it's a pretty remarkable moment to watch it happen. It's like, oh. Yeah, it's, it's something like, right, because you've only seen it like on the computer and then you see yeah. it now, it's a little bit more normal. But, you know, at the time it was like, wow. I guess it was that two-dimensional art moving through this, the, the, that, that CAD phase where I, I could actually create 3D things and then it was a, how do I get these out of the computer and into my hands? And then what benefits can they also? Right. So one of your, one of your best known videos is your zombie weapon from yeah. last year, 2019. <laughs> Tell me how long was that build and how many of the techniques that you used in that build were you learning along the way or had you already <laughs> done? Because there's a whole bunch of different techniques in that thing. Yeah, I'm glad that you you uh, you noticed that because that was probably the most different things in there, which was really a nice. Uh, it probably it was in two waves because the first thing I was trying to get it done for was for Makers Camp last fall. Uh, and so, if you see any pictures or video of me there with it, it wasn't finished yet. I actually put it together in the car. We drove from Michigan over to uh, New York. Okay. So for uh, the 12 hour drive, nine hours of it, I was in the back seat uh, building it. So we had, we rent, had a rental car and uh, I left it with some metal chips where I was drilling uh, steel in the back seat. Yeah. Um, it pulled right off. I, I couldn't have asked for a better result. And, and then I had been doing, this is my um, little fidget toy, right? Yeah, so I started getting involved with the chains and sprockets and I thought, I'm going to make something with chain drive with the with the Harbor Freight motor, that's a zombie weapon. That thing's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, it, I mean, you've it, got laser cutting. Helped. You mentioned that laser cutting. You're doing weathering. You're doing some painting. You're doing leather work. You're doing electric. Oh, the leather, right? Yeah. The, the battery right. over to the motor. You're doing a whole bunch of 3D printing and all yeah. the paint ideas in there. There's a whole lot going on. Never mind the fire because you're taking a brush torch and modifying. Yeah, that. there's fire. Right, right. I know. At least, how do you, how would you suggest someone get started in metalworking if they're interested in that? You you know if you're impatient to to at least you know get your hands wet or dirty I should say with a um, with a mini lathe. Uh, another way, like with a, we're fortunate enough nearby here that and with the with the pandemic right now, I'm just going to say go to a makerspace, but <clears throat> it's kind of tough at this time. But uh, I have a, a makerspace nearby that has two, two lathes, one like mine and one bigger than mine. And also they have a bridge port at, at the makerspace. And they've got people there to um, train you. Oh, that's a lot good. of makerspaces are like that. So to, to get involved at very little cost, I would say track down a makerspace that has metalworking. All right, before we let you go, favorite tool, real quick. What is your favorite tool in your garage? Oh, right, right now, it's my, uh, my little South Bend lathe. It really is. And I would say it's my favorite because I actually, I think I'm getting a good grasp on using it right now. And you know what I mean when I say I can think of a part like, oh, I want to make this part. Like I need a bushing or something for the, like the, say the lawnmower needs a bushing for a wheel or something. I can walk out there, grab a piece of metal, go on the lathe, make the part, and go and use it. Yeah, definitely. So works by Solo on Instagram, on YouTube, on Instructables. Yep, Twitter. Twitter, everywhere. Yep, and, on, and my website is worksbysolo.com. So. Right on. And you have yep, a there I've seen, and, and of course links to the videos as well. Bertie Solo, thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot, Kevin. See you later. Yep. Jeremy, there's lots of different ways to end up as a quote maker. Of course. There's lots of different, you don't have to be one particular thing. And one of the interesting stuff you find at like a place like WorkbenchCon is you'll have ex-military, you'll have graphic designers. Bernie is a professionally trained artist who worked in the automobile industry for a long time. You'll have randos like me who played volleyball <laughs> and then started making stuff, but have made stuff for a long time. There's a lot of different ways to end up here. Very cool. But it, you are actually here, so we need to have you do some work. DJ Jeremy Roche, official DJ of the Los Angeles Lakers, but today at the beck and call of the maker in charge, right? Yes. Yes. I okay. feel like I need safety equipment now. Now, for this one, now you'd be all right on this one. But do, so, I, but do I look good? Yes. Oh.
You could either shoot ski or you could do this. <laughs> so we put our image on before. That'll be drying a little while. I have one here for you. So what I want you to do is dip your hand in and then you're gonna to start to wet part of this. And you're gonna to wanna to scrub the paper layer off. And you'll see as you get going there. Like are we doing like a two finger technique? Uh, or? Just get you, yeah, get in there. Yeah. This is just plain water that you're gonna use. And you're gonna to wanna to wet the paper. Now you're gonna to have to get a little more aggressive with it. You can already see his face. Well, you have to say, Kevin. <laughs> now, the thing is, you're going you're to want to get more water, too. You want it to start to soak through because you're, you're trying to take that paper layer off. That's what you're trying to do. And that's been sitting for a while, so that might be challenging. I maybe should have made one of those this morning. It's just one of those things like Rachel Ray where you show the dish and then there's one already made afterwards. Right. Get down there by the foot where it's, uh, where it's coming in. You can see it's giving way. Now, you'll start to feel it give way underneath your hand. You want to yeah. take that layer off, but you want to leave the color. So this is where a little bit of touch comes in, that you want to scrape it away, and you're going to want to take off the actual paper. We're up here, yeah. Yeah, oh, sorry. You want to take off the paper, Ooh, but like not take right off there. the color. Yeah, see what I mean? So, and, and that's a good thing. I'm glad you did that. So look at this edge. It's starting to come off. You want to go towards the edges. You can do whatever you want in the middle, but I would go towards the edges otherwise. I was just about to brag about my DJ hands being uh, supple and used to this... Uh direction and then I ruined it. I'm surprised you didn't lean sideways and give it this. Well, if I had used to my other hand, I could put it to my ear like everybody does when they <laughs> describe how you DJ. Exactly. Wiki, wiki. Wiki. So you're going to be here for a little while because it does take some to get through the layers and you're going to have to kind of feel it out. And I've done this over the course of a few to feel out exactly where the color starts to go away and you know, you might even want to print a little section around that you can kind of take off, a little extra off your image. Yeah, so you're getting the idea here. You're going to take it down to color. And what you'll find is eventually you'll get down to a color that you like. Then you have to let it dry. First thing you have to let it dry because you're going to want to then coat it with some polyurethane, probably the same stuff you glued it with if you're using poly anyway. You can do a layer of polyurethane on top of your image. But what you're going to find is when you let it dry, it's going to go back to white and it'll have this kind of whitish quality it has now. It will return. And so you kind of have to play with, okay, how much paper is left on top versus how much color is there. And it's just a learning process. And you get down to where you'll put the poly on and you'll see if the poly makes all the white disappear or not, if the color is still kind of pure. If it isn't water-based poly, you just rinse it right off and you can scrape a little more paper off, let it dry try again. But there you get an idea of how the image will come through. And is the goal to get to make this as untextured as possible, like with all the paper off? Yes. And that was one of the things Brad Rodriguez talked about when it was poly versus gel. The gel left more of that texture, more of that paper. It was harder to get off. This was a little bit easier. I haven't tried that yet. I'm going to try that later this week. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. This Give is very satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what is it, ASMR? Yeah. Or, or a little bit like that, I mean, touch. you know, when you get a sunburn and some of your skin peels off. Huh. In the middle there. You'll start to see it kind of ball up and you'll, you'll get a feel for taking some of it off. I'm nervous. Now, the thing nervous I discovered. Now he's injured his foot. He has, yeah. He, that's like this butterfly we're going to work with here in a second. It was attacked by a bird. <laughs> it was attacked by a bird. Nothing's her. perfect in life. All right, well, let's move along from this process here, Jeremy, because this, this does take a while. I feel like I did a really good job. But There's something very appealing about 8-bit characters. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. I, I like that. All right, let's throw him off to the side. Let's take that to the sink, if you would. I'm glad I had safety goggles on for that. Yeah, I got safety first. Oh, wait, okay. You'll actually need safety goggles for this part next. Okay. Let's throw that. Yeah, we'll take that risk later. Then you just pour that in there. It's all right. We're gonna cut this out first before we get to our world maker. So we're gonna we're gonna give a little jigsaw action here. So after you get all the paper rubbed off, and Jeremy, you can see on here. I don't know if, I don't know if we can see with the the up camera. There's a little bit of white left here. Just a bit, you know, I'm a little bit short on some of these. And at some point I give up because I don't want to tear off the edge. And so I'll leave it. And 
in a lot of the cases, it has almost an old-timey quality about the picture. Yeah, from my point of view, I never would have noticed that was paper before until you pointed out. Like, it just looks like, like you said, it's old-timey or it's what the butterfly looked like. Yeah, a little bit of stamp. So, so this butterfly is all set for the next step. And generally, with these shapes, you're going to have some oddball shapes. So I go jigsaw. If you have a square, great. Like this one here. That one's just a square. If we can go to the, uh, yeah, the feature placement shot. This is actually Special J Original. So this is where you can really get crew shot quite a bit. That is a whole bunch of heads of a, my oldest son's friend. He's the, <laughs> his name's Jason. They call him Special J. And so I made this for him, and it's J Heads Cereal. And so this is where I think this very simple process can be taken to another level is if you play with the Photoshop aspect of it. It's one thing you want to do a butterfly because it's kind of a cool a, thing to have in your living room. It's on a piece of wood. I guarantee if you show this to your friends, you'll say, how, how did I do that? Or you ask them, how did I do that? They won't know. No. no they clue. won't know. All right. Let's clamp this to the desk. Now you're going to need the safety goggles. Already prepared, Kevin. But you want to coat it in poly first so you don't damage your image, so you can actually clamp it to the desk. And when you're, using, when you're doing small items, you're going to want to leave some space so you have space to clamp and space to run the jigsaw. Go ahead and pick up that jigsaw down there below you, Jeremy. Oh, geez. Yeah, don't. Where's the safety on this thing? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lock. You can lock it on. Apparently you can't lock it off. All right, so when you're jigsawing now, I want you to make sure you stay flat. You're going to come in like this, get yourself flat, and you're going to watch the blade and cut just proud of the butterfly. Don't cut right on the edge. Cut just proud. Okay. I'm not sure this was what you, oh, this brought, what you brought good. me over here for. This is going to be entertaining. Now we got them actually working. Get this saw going before it's up against the wood, though. Get here, you might want to trim this up just a little bit. You're going to want to come in maybe with the blade again and kind of chisel this shape out a little bit. But in any case, you're definitely going to want to break the edge. You're definitely going to want to come in and break the edge like this so it's not sharp. And you're going to want this plywood. One of the advantages of this birch is it feels really nice when you sand it. It looks good. It has a nice feel to it. And that's just a little bit sanded. And is this different compared to the one that we put the 8-bit guy on earlier, which is thinner material. Same stuff. Same stuff. White birch. Same quality, just thinner. Got it. Now, if you go to a cheaper one, you can go to a cheaper plywood. It's not going to feel the same. When you sand it, it's going to have voids. It's not going to sand up very nice. Pay extra for the white birch if you're doing something you're going to have in your living room. All right. So there you get the idea how you're carving out your piece. And we're further down the road. And that piece, ladies and gentlemen, will be going to charity, and you could say, DJ Ruscha, hack this piece of wood. There you go. <laughs> this is an idea of one that's already cut out. So you can play with your cutout shapes. And this one is for my son, who has been missing basketball practice. This is a, a little bit of a mix, because normally he would be on 
the milk container? Because he's been missing practice. He's been missing practice, but he hasn't been seeing his coach. So that's his coach at the local high school here. <laughs> and it does say, if you haven't been to practice, you may have been missing. <laughs> Nick, his jump shot is devastating. Is that the milk carton that you pour into the Special K container? You could. You, made? you could. Yeah, we could use these together. That would be fine. So again, playing with the Photoshop. And in fact, with this one, if you look at it overhead, with this one, I not only did everything we just did, but I also went in and I added with pencil afterwards to define these lines mm -hmm. a little bit. Because yeah. this is kind of an off brown. And the lines weren't showing up with the box. So I actually gave it a little bit of an indent and just a little bit of a line. And I would probably do one more coat of poly over that to seal the pencil in there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different ways to add to what's happening in your individual piece. And a lot of it's just experimentation. And now I'm concerned about Nick. Hopefully we find him soon. <laughs> we'll find him. Yeah, let's see if he's, see if he's around. So here we have a few examples of, uh, of possibilities. That butterfly will look cool once it's cut out. When somebody who knows how to use a jigsaw cuts it. You can also make a Lorax, I suppose, if you want. That's an inside joke. All right. Steps that we've already talked about. We'll give you a full recap at the end. But right now, what do we do? We took the paper off yep. with some water. Very you know, satisfying. Very satisfying. You're going to let it dry. Then you're going to come back and you're going to hit it with some poly. And you're going to coat the image in. So that you, then when you run the jigsaw over it, it doesn't take the image off. Otherwise, it would because you just have that thin little layer. The jigsaw would take it off the top. And then you're going to sand everything and get your shape however you want it. How long after you take the paper off like I did with the water does it need to sit before you can use the jigsaw? Uh, well, you're going to have to put multiple. I would put multiple coats of poly on it. Got it. You could do one or two and it will, pro it will hold. It will seal in that image. If you, if you did two for sure, it seals it in. Then you can cut it out and put more coats on it if you yeah. want after it's already cut out. That would be fine. But that the water-based poly, the huge advantage is this takes maybe an hour to dry. If you use an oil-based poly, you're talking about overnight. Got it. And it smells like you work in a chemical factory when you use the stuff. Sweet. It's brutal. I've used it. It has an incredible sheen, but it is a difficult material to clean up from, and it doesn't dry very quickly. Can you do something like this? Like I noticed the Lorax doesn't have a shine to it. Right. He's matte. Got it. You can use matte, you can use semi-gloss, or you can use gloss. I, I like the gloss a lot. That's typically what I use is the gloss. It just has a nice feel, yep. fit, and finish to it. All right, let's get to our world of makers. I think Katie Freeman checking in from Iowa. Katie. Hi, my name is Katie Freeman, Freeman Furnishings, Freeman Furnishings, um, and welcome to Iowa. Lately, we've been having lots of hot and humid weather, which is not my favorite thing of, of all time, but, you know, you, you may do with what you can do with. Um, and when I'm not power curbing things like this bowl or pieces of furniture, then you can find me weekly on the podcast that I host called the Maker Mom Podcast, where I interview another maker mom about her journey to becoming a maker and the hectic life of being a mom. Uh, you can also find me on YouTube and Instagram under Freeman Furnishings and Maker Mom Podcast. And uh, yeah, I do carving, I do resin stuff, I do crazy out of the box stuff a lot of times, just to try it out and uh that's a little bit about me all right hope you're having a fantastic day have a fantastic weekend bye to hear what she does the make her mom podcast school and, and she's talking about power carving and we should do some power carving here on the show another time this is a power carving disc I've used this, I actually used this to make the AVP hammer last year. Nice. Hear me. A giant four and a half foot long, 16 pound hammer. And uh, give that bad boy a little feel. Ooh. Got some weight to it. Some texture. Feels like uh, possibly Captain America's shield, but in mini form. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. So th this thing will really eat through some wood. Power carving's pretty cool to do because you take uh, a grinding wheel in this case, and you're just trying to make shapes with it. You can make bowls, you can make a lot of different things. 
And is that the point of that is that you're coming up with specific shapes that you can't do with other material? Yeah, kind of organic shapes and bowls. It's hard to do bowls. You can do them with CNC's, obviously, if you if you have enough. If you have a CNC, if you have enough throat to your CNC, because there's not a lot of space. That only has three inches of travel, the one that I have. So it's difficult to carve anything with any depth. I had a friend of mine who was using actually what's called a chainsaw blade on this. Hmm. Nearly lost his finger in a giant spoon we built. We built a six foot tall spoon because why not? Well, you weren't a real maker then. So. He was. He was very excited about it. Spoon, 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 and then it went like that inside the hole oh. and got his finger. And he went, "Oh no!" He that was the last bit he worked on the yes. spoon. Yes, he is no longer a maker. No. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right, let's get back to our project here. I think creativity when it comes to transferring to wood is where it's all at because you saw the transfer, pretty simple. Yeah. You're just going to run down a bead of glue. You're going to put your image that you printed in reverse on a laser printer on top of there, and then you're going to let that dry. You're going to take it and rub it off by hand, and you can use a brush too. Some people use an old toothbrush. Oh, okay. I found that the old toothbrush, while it keeps your hand from taking a little bit of damage, what it does do is it is a little too aggressive. It tends to take away more color, in my opinion. And it, so I stick with my hand. And you can really get a feel then for what's happening. So you take off all the, the paper. You leave yourself the ink. You're going to coat it with polyurethane. There's your poly. You can get one of any 100 varieties. And then you're going to jigsaw out your shape. And by the way, this is the last time that I'm going to jigsaw 8-bit characters. This size would be fine. Let me show you. Let me show you. This was not so much fun. <laughs> this was a little more challenging in terms of cutting them out. So, again, Mega Man. This is where the whole thing kind of came from. And much to my son's dismay, a lot of the things I make, I'm going to pull this back, guys. Keep zooming. Keep zooming. I'm going to pull this back a little bit. I like to add lights to things because I think LEDs are cool. So this is taking a simple technique and adding a whole bunch to it. So I did a black background, which is plywood. I then went ahead and did a plywood box. No, I didn't use splines. I should have. If I had more time, I would have. And then I did a hardwood frame on it and did different depths. So this is the city here, a normal scene from Mega Man. There's actually a little Mega Man right there. Nice. So this is actually from the game, and you spend a lot of time jumping. That's uh, Cut Man. Very creative names back there. Yes, the very creative, stuff. yes. But when it's 8-bit, you can only do so much. Right, exactly. So Cut Man versus Mega Man, and I spaced them off with some hot glue. I actually need to space them back a little bit more because the light is not catching the guys in the dark. It's right behind them. I need to space him back because the light's coming up from the interior here. Yeah, let's see. Let's shut down. I think we have too much ambient light from other places, but you get the idea. There is a little bit of color. Light. There's a little bit of color on it. Well, the sun hasn't set yet, so right. it's hard for Mega Man to be in the dark. <laughs> I actually, I think I might make with my silhouette or Cricut or whatever, your, your plotter, I think I'm going to make some vinyl mask and put some stuff in the background. That's probably a better way to do background. I just like this because it gave some depth to it. The thing I discovered with this is I had a real tough time getting on this much space, getting effectively to take off the paper and leave the color. You know, there's oh, some yeah. spots where it's coming off and a lot of paper left. But again, like we were saying, it's a whole, it's a whole look. And it looks vintage. Yeah. Now, did you use the same jigsaw... I attempted to use on the butterfly on these little guys. I did with that thinner blade. Got it. Because these guys are only half inch, you'll see. And how long did that take? Oh, that, that, this is about 45 minutes of work. Sweet. And then I came back with the file. And that's why I said I'm never <laughs> going to do that again. But these guys were cut on a piece of wood that was about as wide as where they're spaced now. Mm. So I clamped down on one side, cut all around him, finished cutting him out. I did all the cutting before I cut him out. Yeah. Before I took him off the piece of wood. Then I flipped it around. I still had clamping space for the other guy. Mm -hmm. If you put them right next to each other or you cut them out just in, in kind of a round form, you wouldn't be able to get all those little spaces. With the jigsaw, you'd have to find another way yes. to do it. You could do it by hand, but that would be a nightmare. A and nightmare. Where is this going in your house? I'm going to hang it somewhere. It's meant to hang. That's why the, the LED comes out the bottom. I'll probably put it on a French cleat somewhere. Cool. Yeah. So 
that's how far you can take it. You can take kind of a wild place. That's same technique added with LEDs, added with box making, and you're somewhere totally different than just doing transfer. Yeah, let's do a little cost breakdown. We've already talked a lot about the build here. I'll leave some of these guys out. So I know you can go and get these printed. I know you can do that. 20 bucks, 200 bucks, depending upon the size. The quality, I, I can tell you, is probably going to be better if it's out of a printing machine. However, you're going to have to wait. You might have some copyright issues if you're going to print something that you want to print from somewhere else. Somebody might ask you if you have image rights. You can do this at your own house. And honestly, the, the materials are very inexpensive. It's a great project for kids or for people that are just getting into making. And you can do it right away. You can wait an hour for it to dry. That's the longest you're going to wait. And then you can go ahead and put your coats of poly on it. And inside of a day, you could have several new pieces of art in your own home. I think that that's, that's a really cool way to go about it. I just like making stuff. I don't need to buy everything. That butterfly looks amazing. I don't know who did the jigsaw, but I think they did a great job. That was solid. <laughs> that was solid. All right. I don't, I don't have a ton to update. I was asking, like, what did I do in the last couple weeks? No? I'm yeah. still working on this. Every day is the same for me, so <laughs> nothing new to update. I'm still working on this. Let me, bring, let me bring over the front of my coffee table. This is the front of my coffee table here. I stacked one-inch birch. I'm really into the birch, by the way. I stacked one-inch birch to create sides of a coffee table. Sides as in? This is the front. This is the, the depth. Oh, it's gonna be a little bit taller, Got it. right? And then I have a I have a uh, routered edge in the back here that will receive the floor, and then the feet actually lock into the side over here. See the side here has the same routered section, yep, but then also has cutouts for feet that it's gonna sit on. So that a lot of time's gone into that as well as preparation for the show. So I don't have a, a terrific amount to report, but this table will be pretty interesting when it's done. And is this the same material that yep. these are made out of? Okay. It is. I cut strips, stacked them, glued them, sanded. I don't know why I did that. I should just made it out of hardwood, but yeah, that's where we are. He likes to <laughs> challenge himself. That's where we are. So it's actually going to have two different tops. It's going to have a glass top that slides off with something underneath. That'll be a surprise. And then it's going to have a whole section that slides off the top and that will leave storage underneath. And like a surprise for your guests when they show up, or a surprise for your wife when the uh, table's in the house? No, oh, something that's fun to play. Oh, okay. Something just, that's fun to play, just yeah. Just curious. All right, all right. Let's get to our thank yous for this week. I want to thank Jeremy for coming. My pleasure. Jeremy Roche, official DJ of the Los Angeles Lakers. You can hear him on Wednesdays. Where can people find you on Wednesday? Oh, man. At my house. Yeah, <laughs> definitely at your house. Uh, I'm doing a live stream DJ set every Wednesday, 2 to 3 o'clock Pacific time. That time might change, but right now, 2 to 3. Um, if you follow any of my social media, it'll all be there, DJ Ruscha. Um But it's on Mixcloud, mixcloud.com, slash live, slash DJ Ruscha. That's long. It is long. Yeah. Their live stream is in beta, but it's the only way we can legally do it as DJs. Okay. So we're giving them some leeway. So bear with me for a little while, but we'll get there. Okay, so go ahead and check Jeremy out there. And if you're at a Laker game, you're hearing music, you love it. Or if you're at the AVP, if that happens again. Yeah, it's convenient how you forgot to mention that part, too. Like, yeah. That's actually how we really know each other, because volleyball, that's true. you're leaving it out. That's true. I did leave off the AVP, but the official DJ of the AVP, and that's been 15, 16 years now? Forever. Whatever, 2003, so you do the math. Before you had a beard. All right. I also want to thank Matt Perez. I want to thank the Land Brothers. That's Josh and Dave, who are the background to this show. We're going to keep trying to evolve here. We're going to keep changing technology as we did this week with some of the sound. We're going to keep doing some different stuff and trying to make it better. And I also want to thank Singular Live, who provided us with an amazing platform to integrate graphics for this show. We appreciate their support of the program. And I think on our way out, uh, Jeremy, we're going to see you in two weeks for more BS. But on the way out, I want you to remember that in your shop, you are the maker in charge. And you may or may not want to do this. You want to do a meltdown? You're damn right I do. All right. Uh, don't set the safety goggles down. I got better. Sa I got better safety goggles for this. <laughs>
And when you catch on fire, boy, hit you with the uh, fire extinguisher first yeah. or the uh, piece of equipment? Is there safety protocols on the show? Is there no. Fire no. hazard? Uh, Should I just aim the fire extinguisher at you right now? Oh, boy. <laughs> Will we have a meltdown or are we out of propane? I think we're out of propane. Still anti chromatic Oh, there you go. Fire. We're out of propane. <laughs> <laughs> The only reason I came over today was to see things blow up. That's it. That's all we got today. That is a terrible way to end the show. <laughs> that thing is laughing at me. We're going to go get propane and then plug it into the end of the show. It's like, yeah, this is awesome. Sweet. Well, we were prepared. Like I said, boys and girls, it's live TV. Anything can happen. Or in some cases, nothing can happen like it just did. <laughs> All right. I'm Kevin. He's DJ Roche. And you are the great fans. Thanks for being here for Build Stuff. Remember, you are the maker in charge in your garage. This is Kevin Barnett's Build Stuff. This is what it looks like. It's a mess, frankly. Not your typical BS. I've got plans. Let's go through it right now. Uh, ah. It chipped off the inside of the beat. I'm Kevin Barnett. Let's BS.